Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna to show you three reasons why you need a snare bottom when you're mixing. We're gonna be looking at snare drum today, uh, especially the snare bottom, but before we dive in, if you are ready to take your snare recordings to the next level and really start honing your workflow as a recording engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my essential guide to recording snare drum, and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through everything you need to know, from mic choice, to mic position, to setting your input gain, to make sure you get a polished and professional sounding snare recording without any more of the hassle, and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide, and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and talk about snare bottom mics. The first reason that you need a snare bottom in your mix is the thickness it provides to your snare drum. Now let me give you some context to our drum sound here and to the track we're working with. I'm going to play you the song, the instrumental mix as it currently stands, then I'll solo up the drums and then we'll finally solo up our snare drum so you have an idea of where our snare is sitting in the song, in the drum mix, and then by itself here. Here is the finished instrumental mix. You can hear we have a nice thick and full sound to our snare drum. When you can hit it, the whole drum resonates. You hear that nice low mid energy that you want from your snare drum that gives it the weight and gives it the thickness it needs to sit, especially against our kick drum here. So let me play you again just our snare drum and then I'm gonna take out our snare bottom mic. Pay attention to how our low end and our low mid changes on the snare drum here. So much of the thickness in our snare tone is coming from our snare bottom mic. So let's listen to each of these mics by ourselves. We'll start here with the snare top. You can hear what that sounds like running through our processing here. Then I want to solo up the snare bottom for you and give you an idea of the tone it's adding to our snare top mic. There's a little bit more weight on the lower side of the frequency spectrum coming from our snare bottom mic than there is coming from our snare top. A lot of our snare top energy is sitting above 200 hertz. The low end energy we're getting from our snare bottom is that 100, 150 area that makes your snare drum sound full. So that's, that's our first one here, okay? Our first reason that you need a snare bottom mic is because of the low end and the thickness it provides to not only your snare drum, but actually to your kick drum because it's a mic sitting underneath your snare, so it's close to your kick drum as well. So you get some kick drum energy from your snare bottom, which is a nice addition to your drum mix. The second reason you need a snare bottom mic in your mix is because of the top end sizzle and the crack it provides to your snare drum. So let me play you one more time here and I'm gonna take out the snare bottom mic. Listen to how that top end sizzle that really makes you identify it as a snare drum because that is the snares on the snare drum, right? On the snare bottom. When I take out our snare bottom mic, listen to how our sizzle disappears on our snare drum here.
without the snare bottom in there, all you're left with is the resonance and the ringing you get from the snare top mic. So all that resonance that you're getting from the snare top mic being next to the rim of the drum doesn't sound so great on its own. But when you have the sizzle and that crackle from the snare bottom, hearing the actual snares rattle on the bottom of the snare drum, in combination with that resonance, it makes for a nice sounding snare drum. They work together to give you a crisp top end and a full snare drum tone, rather than just getting that resonance from uh, the rim of the snare drum on the top. That doesn't sound so great by itself. In combination, they sound better. To exaggerate this a little bit further, I'm gonna throw an EQ here on the bottom of our chain here. This is our snare bus. We're gonna start without our snare bottom in, and I'm gonna boost up some top end and see if we can get some of that crispiness and some of that sizzle. Then we'll throw our snare bottom in and see how we can get it a lot easier. So we can boost some stuff lower here around 3K to get a little bit more crack from our snare drum. But once we get up here towards like 8K, 10K, especially above 10K, there's not a lot of energy up there coming from just our snare top mic. We would have to boost a bunch of this to try and get that nice air and that nice sizzle from our snare drum. Let's throw on our snare bottom now. And I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. We'll sweep this band around and hear where our energy lies on our snare drum. Hear all that nice crispiness and that nice sound we get from the snares resonating on the bottom of the drum? That's what you get when you put your snare bottom mic in. So if you don't have a snare bottom, next time try recording a snare bottom. You can see what it adds to the mix here in the top end. So that's two reasons so far. Number one was the thickness it adds to your snare drum on the bottom end. Number two was the sizzle and the crispiness it adds to your snare drum on the top end. And the third reason here is how it helps your snare drum cut through the mix. You can hear when I put it in, right? It adds that nice crispiness up on the top end. And you can see we get a little bit more energy here in the high mids too. So we get some extra crack coming out of our snare drum, plus the thickness we're getting in on the low end. It makes for so much power added to our snare drum, which helps it cut and compete in our mix. So I'm gonna get rid of this final EQ here. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the snare drum back in the mix. We'll start with just our drum mix here and I'll take our snare bottom out. And I want you to pay attention to how the energy shifts in our drum mix to what's in power. So here is just our drums and I'm gonna take out our snare bottom here. Notice the void of frequencies when I pull the snare bottom out. It feels like there's something missing. Our snare drum is fighting to be a powerful force in the drum mix, but there's just something that's not there. It doesn't have the support it needs to be a force to be reckoned with and to sit right even with our kick drum. When we have that snare bottom in, when we get that thickness from our snare bottom, our kick drum and our snare drum can sit right with each other and really drive your mix forward. Now let's put it into the entire mix here and I'll do the same thing. I'll pull out our snare bottom mic and pay attention to how our snare drum changes inside the entire mix here.
if you saw here, the level doesn't change too much on our snare drum with and without our snare bottom, but the impact it has on the mix drastically changes. When we pull our snare bottom out of the mix, we lose a ton of low end punch, a ton of crack on the top end. We lose that nice sizzle that helps your ear pick out and identify the snare drum in the mix. So it no longer cuts through the mix. We can throw this snare bottom back in and your snare instantly is a force to be reckoned with in the mix. It's a powerful driving factor in our drum sound. It helps to push the mix forward, keep it grooving, and it cuts through the mix with our snare bottom. So those are our three reasons here for putting a snare bottom mic on your drum and having it available to you inside your mix. Number one is it adds thickness to your snare drum. Number two is the sizzle and the crack it adds on the top end. And number three is how it helps your snare drum cut through the mix. I hope that was helpful for you, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are ready to take your snare recordings to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you, and it is completely free. It is my essential guide to recording snare drum, and you can download it below to start creating more professional snare recordings in less time. Thank you so much for watching today, and I will see you in the next video.